Okay, here we go. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to call this video or where it will land because this is more of a uh, yeah, a, an update that uh, collects everything a bit. Um, we are going to talk about some Belgian underground releases um, and some other stuff. Uh, first up, we're listening to Dead Raven Choir. My firstborn will surely be blind. Um, Lo-fi, almost funeral doom, black noise. Yeah, it's weird. Um, I got to them uh, because they are on Aurora Borealis, uh, a label that did uh, Sylvester Anfang, Cosmos Slachtafval, uh, the CD version, and we're going to talk about that band in a bit. Uh, normally, or why this is a weirder video, I, uh, we were going to do the uh, Grondwerk top 10, top 20, but um, we're not ready, so that has been postponed a bit, so yeah, therefore a video about something else. Um, let's see, first things first, I talked about the Dead Raven Choir, which is actually a very good record if you're into everything I just said. Um, the uh, other thing I want to talk about is uh, Lamb, Simon um, from Hand of Glory, unfortunately passed uh, last week, I think. Um, he was in, yeah, he was so prolific that it's impossible to, um, to remember them all. Uh, he was one of the members behind ha House of First Light, uh, a label or a collective, if you will, that made some of the yeah most uncompromising U.S. black metal. Uh, I read somewhere there someone was recounting his memories of him, and um, they said at the time there was nothing in U.S. black metal, and I think it was around the time that stuff like Liturgy, maybe, or uh, Death Heaven, you know that. The time Pitchfork uh, was meddling into black metal, uh, he said there was nothing around to really hold on to, and then uh, the guys from House of First Light, which bands like this, for example, Sanguine Eagle, I re-listened to this, I did a, uh, a night with all his releases. This is Individua Individuation, which originally came out on House of First Light, but this is on Psychic Violence. Uh, for Grondwerk 2, we were listening to Vorde, that record, uh, listened to that the past month, I mean, maybe six times, uh, such a good record. Winds of Glatzheimer and Badb, I'm not sure um, of the last band, but Winds is also a very, very good band. He had a lot of shit, and then that's just the pure US black metal, the Hand of Glory stuff, which in the past I had problems with uh, getting into. Uh, this is only for Mortis. This is uh, To Molest the Dreaming. Um, it was at the time that my tolerance, if you will, because that's a huge word for uh, raw black metal, was at a low point, I guess, because I was oversaturated. Uh, diving back in, I would say half a year ago, um, also when this came out, I think this is about a year ago now, this is the Witch Moon split. Um, which came out on perished soil. There is the man himself, Lamb. He was apparently into a lot of weird stuff. This is the Witch Moon site. Um, yeah, it wasn't to follow Mayombe and stuff like that. So, real deep guy. The coolest thing about him is the, all the pictures you see um, with him with the um, the Royal Hounds crew in New York and stuff like that. So he was deep embedded in all all that shit. Um, yeah, man. Zarabanda Moon, Weeping Nimbus, and there's something like Night Passion. I haven't heard that one, but. Um, those are things I'm definitely going to check out. Um, last but not least, he was also uh, Amalantra Workings, who did um, logos, borders, and you know, look it up. Uh, he did the Witch Moon, for example, he did the Hand of Glory, all that stuff. So I I never made the connection between Hand of Glory and Vord, for example, but it's insane the uh, the amount of yeah, of good music and good artwork this guy did, so um, yeah, he will be missed by more people than just me, I think. Uh, if you see the outpouring, it just keeps on coming, keeps on coming. So yeah, he touched a lot of people's hearts, and yeah, in all, he looked like a superb guy, so he will be missed. Uh, the best picture of the last five years is, is, is one of him, um, when, when he's gnawing on that concrete, um, you know, grave, gravestone or whatever. So yeah, once more. To my list. I don't have the splits or anything from them. They are uh, they're going for astronomical prices, of course. Um, but yeah, one day 
we'll have some more by him. There you go. It's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. I'm sorry for that. They're whole. So there we go. Now that that's out of the way, not lamb, but the falling. I um, got third place at the Pankraker. Uh, they did their top 100 extreme metal, and it was uh, an entire day, I think from 12 to 12, maybe? It was long. Or from 4 to 12, I'm not sure. On Christmas Day, um, you had to guess which one was going to take the top spot. I entered a bit late because, uh, um, yeah, because of the kids. I was. No, listening to some extreme metal on one side, playing with kids on the other side, it was Christmas. So, um, but yeah, I managed to get my vote, and then of course it was the mysterious Dom Satanas. Uh, I was third. I grabbed. I didn't grab the uh, Nimberius, Nimberius 12 inch, I think, uh, but he offered me this, the Necromancer Nocturnal Onslaught tape. Um, yeah, on Destruction Records. I haven't found the time to play it. But it's very much appreciated. Uh, there you go. Nice pro printed tape. And it's actually a cool J card. It's just a envelope style. There you go. Some Bruegel, I guess. Or whatever it is. It's probably not Bruegel. And then there. Here are the guys. Cool names, I guess. Rishka, Meat Grinder, Peppy, Soul Ripper, <laughs> and Bimbal Bloodhammer. So, yeah. in love already but yeah have this nifty little sticker on there so yeah thank you Peter Pan for this um, it's really appreciated the shirt I bought in support of course and then there were these stickers which I'm going to keep one and then one is going into Midwestern Abyss these are coming for you in his package last thing he sent me was this one Pankraker, nice oversized button to put uh, on your forehead. But yeah, that's that. Cheers to Peter. Hail to Lamb. Ah, Hail. Alright, now that that is out of the way, um, let's talk some Belgian underground releases. Um, my nephew was here and we were talking records. And he picked out, I don't know how we got on the topic, but um, Sylvester Anfang came to mind. I guess we were talking about, you know, striking covers or records or whatever. So I pulled out a bunch, and these are <clears throat> a few releases that are not really Sylvester Anfang adjacent, but that are in the same bin, that are from the same label, and I'm not sure who is in that band or who is not in that band, because they are, um, yeah, they are elusive or... Yeah, I just don't know. I never looked too hard into it because, you know, sometimes you don't want to know. I ruined it for myself sometimes by um, just seeing who is in what and what is where, but nevertheless. These are the two first records that were sitting in the same bin, and this is Rot, R-O-T. Uh, this is the first one, and this is the second one. Uh, in essence, this is a field recording drone one-man project, I guess. It's not really a band. It's more of that... A lot of these records will be from the Krak label, um, which is a field drone noise label out of Ghent. Uh, this is the first one that is on Krak. Nice looking cover. And one of them is, um, I think... Let's see the other front. This one is more of a droney, um, yeah, you you hear him sometimes walking around and doing shit and just, you know, working in some kind of, I don't know, it's weird. It's, it's more of a drone build-up piece, and that was at the time, I guess, what I was into. Um, I usually, or in some cases, when you start collecting like Silvas Hanfang and you start to dig into the label, you sometimes grab some records that you are not ready for um, or that maybe yeah in some cases never grow on you this is something that is more of a document it is not music it is just you know, sounds I guess there are no songs on here but it's not it's not bad and it's interesting and I discovered in this pile a record that um, or two records actually that are 
very uh, yeah very worth rechecking or checking out. But rot is a great start to see where we're going with this. The second one is more of a um, it's also droney or droning, but it's more in the style of uh, when, for example, Velvet Underground goes off the rails. Um, so it's more of a collective piece, I think. It seems a bit more instrumentation here and there than just uh, the field recording stuff. It says, Rod, ceci n'est plus avio, il chantant pour vous. On Mork Records, this is 47, also a label from Gent. It came with this. There you go. It's, it looks like one guy uh, and a lot of plants and some kind of warehouse playing his stuff. Uh, limited to 175 and there is the Mork Records address. Um, yeah, I don't know too much. Here is the label flyer. It's all hand copied and stuff like that. Mork Records, Wim Le Kluise. I don't know if I know that guy, I don't think so. Maybe when I see his face. Uh, like I said, yeah, a bit Velvet Underground, E, Drony, white label, one sided 12 inch. And this is a bit more, if, you, if you're interested, uh, this is a bit more interesting than, um, than the other Rot records. But you know, if you have a name like Rot, I'm going to be interested, I guess. Uh, then into some um, neo folk, if you will, kiss the anus of a black cat with the nebulous dream on consoling records. I have his other output on um, CD. This is the only vinyl copy I have. I know why it um, went through a. Is it? Cons no, it's not uh, consoling. It's conspiracy records. Sorry, conspiracy. You're welcome. It says. So yeah, this is one of the last releases I picked up from Conspiracy, The Nebulous Dreams. It's wet, wet, it's white on the back, it's wet. Uh, there is the Conspiracy logo. And uh, the cover is just a spiral, I guess, with all little stripey stripes. Nicely done. He all, the other one is like a scruffy looking cat with a big bowl uh, attached to him and stuff like that. So yeah. A uh, very good vocalist. Uh, I don't know what to compare it to because it's not my cup of tea, um, that entire scene. I just know that the Silver Catches Lark or something like it has been too long, but that song, when I first heard that, it dragged me in and then I kept being interested in it. Um, Steph Irritant is his name. Uh, vocals, stringed instruments, piano, organ, drums, percussion, bass, viola, cello, vocals. So there's a lot of instrumentation on here. Um, yeah, kiss the anus of a black cat when they believed in nebulous dreams. Yeah, got the cat from the A. Very cool release. Um, this is the clear version. And like I said, I prefer the earlier albums, but I only have those on CD. Got the cat. That will probably be, probably be the cover picture I guess um, but yeah if you like I said if you're into Neo Folk and I know why it is um, he, uh, he went crazy for this project I think he ordered them all straight from Steph Irritant um, but yeah he liked it a lot because he couldn't stop talking about it it really surprised me that he found out about it not that it's so underground or hard to find but you know To have such a small Belgian project, that's cool. Then, this is one of the records I, um, yeah, I was surprised by actually. Uh, Helvete de Hek. Helvete de Hek. Um, sound wise, hmm, it's hard to describe actually. It is, it is like a sort of a jam session, but very controlled. Um, it is folky in some parts, but it's like folky, not jam band as in a lot of colors and stuff. I mean, it's called Helvete. Um, but it just builds and builds and the intensity of the music just grows into not a droning because it's very clean, very well played, very clear production. But um, yeah, it's something that just keeps building like a boulder rolling down a hill. And like I said, I just put it on 
to remind myself um, this morning and um, this is one of those records that I'm going to dig into a bit more just because you hear that something is there but if you have to ingest or digest a record this size because it's a full length double sided a and B um, yeah it's hard to really get into on the first listen again but um, this is one of the records I was not ready for when I bought it and then maybe now I'm not sure if he is linked or connected to the Siltastic Anfang crew but this is also on Krak Ze zullen ons komen halen met vuurpijl en karabijn. Niemand zullen ze sparen voor de gek. Is het einde nabij? Cool. But yeah, that's nice. The other one in that same category, and then we'll dive into the main part of this video. This is Ignatz with selected songs from cassettes 2005 to 2009. Um, once again, not sure if he is in here. What this is, is it says on the cover, selected works. So these are demo tapes, uh, I guess, if you will, that they then put together on a um, yeah, on a record. As you can see, it's all recorded in a closet, it seems, on the Mighty Kraken. I'm not sure if they are still around. They had this great scene. Um, I think I showed a few. I showed the one with Ernesto in, the, in one of the paperwork. But the cover is insane. If this was really true, it, traveling would be very easy because Belgium is like two to three hundred kilometers true and then I live here Hasselt and this is white Russia <laughs> and this is Poland so the entirety of Europe is centered around Belgium like we are the sun for for some reason I guess um, yeah sound wise it, it's all over the place it's the recording is always the same but music wise I would say sound wise it's very wavy tape delayish guitar tracks with some vocals that go that do the same wavy things. Uh, musically, it goes from influences like something like the Beatles, maybe, but they're demo demo shit, uh, through songs of high also in that in that weird category or uh, music span. You should consider this, but all with a yeah a Maxwell tape delay like the center labels. Gray cassettes, remember them? I remember getting my allowance, buying blank cassettes and then giving them to the older guys at the uh, boarding school I went to and they in the weekend would give them to DJs and discotheques <laughs> and then put some put their live sets on there you could buy them for like 200 francs or something like that I wish I still had those tapes like clubs like Katsu and Montini and stuff like that nobody cares on this channel but maybe Ralph if he's watching uh, but yeah that's some long gone times before we dive into Sylvester Anfang, let's put some shine on a Belgian artist um, actually from Venezuela, uh, but he I think he emigrated here or he, or he was adopted, I'm not sure, I'm not going to... Cheers. I'm not going to delve too much into his past, but in my opinion, very underrated by most. Um, in some scenes or in some circles he is revered like he should be but this is bare bones lay low Ernesto Gonzalez um, this is Valle de Dit I have a few releases of him if you check out his discogs it is completely insane I uh, I say underrated also by myself because I uh, I don't have a lot of his material just because it's so astronomical in size but um, I once had him play an opening and that's actually where Whitefield started because I was thinking back I'm going to drift a bit, I'm sorry. I was thinking back because Kram did the header and it said uh, Whitefield, born 2010. And then I thought I was doing videos in 2005. I started doing vinyl videos. But Whitefield actually was born uh, when he played my uh, exhibition. Because the uh, the video I put uh, or made from that exhibition was uh, Whitefield Productions. And that was 2010. So it's been since then that I uh, that this is linked to the channel actually. Barebones Lay Low is a very little folk influence. There's a lot of droning stuff. There's a lot of um, uh, yeah, a lot of his roots, uh, Venezuela, that kind of music. That that's what I mean with folk, different than European folk. Those influences come in. His guitar playing is 
insane. I mean, there are tracks on here that if you didn't know, and this is a this is a weird comparison, but you know stuff like Jimi Hendrix kind of, but his his most hazy um, his most hazy tunes. So yeah, I kind of love everything about him and everything he does. He is on top of that. He is a great guy. So yeah. this is called Valle de Dit. I'm not sure what that means. Um, one track is called Bah. Cosmic Herbs, bass, vomiting, vomiting bass. Uh, Valle de Dit also on crack. Um, so yeah, it's a bit all over the place. Every tra track has a bit of his own um, has a bit of his own thing going on, but it is a very very good record. Um, one that deserves some more shine, and I'm going to track down at least his full lengths. This is the insert that came with it. Um, there is a huge tank list. Um, for example, Sylvester Anfang 2, uh, and then it says here, mm, thanks to Bart Gilles and his Gypsy Sphinx, that is my cousin, and I will talk about that in the on the next record, but yeah. Collage style, there's some noise influences on here, although it's not really noise, um, he's all over the place and definitely worth checking out. This is a 7 inch, a four-way split between some dudes on Kraak, <clears throat> nothing really special. Jonas Reinhardt, Jonathan Fitusi, I'm not even sure who that is. René Hell with chamber music, nice. And then Bare Bones lay low with wet streets, so yeah, white wet. The circle is round. Um, that was in there. And then Gypsy Sphinx was a label my cousin Bart did some time ago. Uh, and it's all these this is a bare bones release he did for them. He, I think he did seven releases in total, all nicely signed. And look at the, that's a lot of records. <laughs> he said he had some stock. Uh, he promised me some years ago that I would get the other records. I think Symf is on his, on his label and something else, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, this is a pasted on uh, yeah, cover on a disco sleeve. If you know what I'm saying, I mean the top is open. Uh, it comes with this insert. There we go. Is there anything on here? I had it upside down. There's a mountain on here. Digit Hums, it's called. Or Deed Hums. I'll put the other one on since we are. Since we have to talk about Sylvester. I'm fine. Be right back. A sides, why not? There you go. So, a lot of instrumentation, a lot of cymbals, a lot of bells. You'll see. You'll see. But yeah, Digit Hums on Zymp Records. No, not Zymp. Gypsy Sphinx. Zymp was one of the thing. Uh, yeah, tank lists. Um, and then the record is actually a very nice pressing for such a small little label. Um, I hope he's not. Too chuffed when I call his label a little label. Nice yellow center labels, which is just a bit extra for this record. I mean, you could do white center labels and nobody would care, but actually a very nice pressing. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot of stuff from uh, my cousin through the years. I mean, he he um, he taught me he taught me to know sun and stuff like that. So that's a part. Of music, I will be in depth to him too forever. Or part of my music upbringing, if you will. The drone noise, whatever part. He sold me my first Catharsis LP, so Bart, if you see this, cheers. That's that. Now into the main part, Sylvester Anfang main part. We're almost half an hour in, but you know. If you have something better to do, there are a lot of videos, or there's just live, you know. I have two 7 inches by them, this is the first one. Sylvester Anfang, this is Sylvester Anfang 2. We have 1 and 2, I'm not sure where they differentiate, it's a hard word. I think the first part was more, it wasn't metal, but the, <clears throat> the way they looked and the way they carried themselves, the covers, it had a bit more metal influence or metallic influence. Not saying it shines true in the uh, in the actual sounds, but the second part is more like crowd rocky, um, 
yeah, noise, folk, field recordings, jam sessions, stuff like that. So, this is on uh, the Great Pop Supplement, and this is for their Summer Tour 2012. Uh, and this is limited to 25 copies. I have number 14. The Great Pop Supplements. Cool thing. Uh, I'm not sure what this label is or where they're from. It sounds English, but I'm not sure. Brown paper sleeve and a big center hole. John Chang's Cosmos Handen and More Than the Man. So, yeah, there's always that kind of metal ish inspired stuff, but more so in the beginning, I would say. This is the first one. Then the second one is uh, this one out of 500, and this is uh, the split with Burial Hex. This is their side once again, so that's Anfang 2. Burial Hex is Clay Ruby, which I could do a video about. I have about this much of his records. Uh, Sylvester Anfang Offer Blut van de Maan Sekte, ABX 25, edition of 500, spring 2008. So yeah, this is a cool split in the sense that I love both of these, um, yeah, both of these bands or projects, if you will. Um, Burial Hex is more noise, I would say, but he has such a discography that there is, it is very short sided to call it noise. Um, yeah, there you go. Nifty looking seven inch, um, and now. I'm in the mood to listen to Burial Hex, actually. His, uh, I talked about his initiations, that record. It's in my top. Top so much of all time, I guess. One more <clears throat> that I don't know what to do with if I don't show it here, and this is Spasm with Sonder Grech, I think. Uh, this is a an anomaly in my collection. I picked this up at, a, uh, at the MUCA, which is a modern art museum. And they just had this um, laying in their shop and I, you know, if you have a record, I am interested. I'm not sure, is this Selden Hunt? I'm almost positive it's him. Uh, this was made, if I'm not mistaken, because Lord knows this has been a long time. Building Transmissions presents 666 seconds of Remix Black Sonics. So it's Invocation, Spawn of Shop Nigorat, Tent, Initiation Key, Infernal Gateway, 18th Inertian Keys, and Evocation. All sounds originated by Spasm. Building, processed by building transmissions. Um, yeah, Selden Hunt, there you go. Building transmissions, is that Nico? I am not sure, but yeah. Uh, they had this project, I think it was for Stuck Festival that I first saw it, it's been too long, but one of these records that was tucked in very safely uh, between between my records and that I need to definitely need to recheck what this is. Um, there is this, which is uh, metal in itself, and then the other side has, it's limited to 300 it seems, I have 282, and the guy has a battery shirt, so. Yeah, I uh, didn't find the time to play this, but I am more than curious to find out what this is. Building Transmissions is a part collective, if you will, from Antwerp. Um, and it seems they celebrated their love for black metal, but we'll see. The fact that Selden hunted the cover is actually crazy. He did a lot of shit for ISIS and stuff like that, so that's maybe why I picked it up. Spasm. Then, finally, into the band. First thing is their Latitude Session with Untitled, an edition of 500. Um, there you go. And I actually thought about right now that I have one more thing that I wanted to show. So we'll make it an hour, I guess. Um, here we go, the Latitude Sessions. Latitude was a, um, or is, I think was, a series of vinyl and CDs um, done by Southern Recordings, where they just ask a band to do one take, one session, I think, um, without too much thinking, so it's a lot of improvising, stuff like that. A creation of Southern Records. Uh, this is limited to 500 and this is 220. 
there we go, all hand numbered. They have these beautiful sleeves. The CDs are actually more beautiful. Um, yeah, these are very too beautiful. Die cut sleeves. Comes with this, if I can get it out. Comes with this picture of the band where they're all playing. So there is a lot of people in here. Uh, November 6th, 2010, Jam 1 to 5. Uh, yeah. Recorded and mixed at Southern Studios, engineered by Harvey Burrell. Um, yeah, beacon of free form experimental hope. Um, yeah, there's an entire text which you probably can't read, but it is what it is. Uh, screen print. That is the screen print they did for um, for that thing. Like I said, some have a bigger image. The CDs have a almost a cover filling image, but yeah, they're all very much worth it. It has grails. It has master musicians of Bukaki circle. Uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. This is a very nice white pressing of that one. Two girls and the other one has the picture of them playing in studio once again. Yeah, very cool. Free form folk, drony, all that good shit. But very much worth checking out if you're into all that kind of stuff. I want to get this in because this is uh, a pretty fragile record with the, you know, with the die cuts. But I'll get this in later. Then we're going to do some more Sylvester Anfang 2 first. There's this one, very colorful. It's called Commune Cassetten. Commune Cassetten. Um, there you go. It's a little bent. On Blackest Rainbow Records. They like so many bands in this genre they're all over the place they're not just on crack they're everywhere it seems but yeah comes as a fold over white on the inside so it's not numbered or anything um, and it has you know some old ass looking pictures i'm not even sure what they are doing some rituals commune rituals uh, yeah, I think this is a bit of the same like the Ignatz um, stuff that these are older releases or tapes they uh, combined and compiled onto one record. Um, Salon Commune, Slow Flanger, Zure Regen, Damian, Salon Commune 3. So, yeah. Cool looking record. Here is the man himself, Ernesto, on the cover of this one. Um, Great pop, it says here. I'm not sure how much flavor this is. 